Hello and welcome to a brand new series of House of Rugby. Myself, Hugh Wisencroft, alongside Saracens and England fullback Alex Good, And we're joined by a Rugby World Cup winner who sadly, as you can see, is not beside us, but is all the way down in New Zealand at the Women's Rugby World Cup. Rachel Burford, hello. Hi guys, hey Hugh, hey Alex. Um, sorry I'm not in the studio today. As you mentioned, I'm down in New Zealand at the Rugby World Cup, preparing for the final this weekend, which is really exciting. But I will be popping up during the show today and I can't wait to be in the studio with you both next week. We miss you, Rachel, but absolutely you will be joining us along the way to give us some of, I guess, the great in-depth knowledge of everything that's going on down in Auckland as well. But as we are together, let's start with you. Mr. Good and, and your weekend at beating Bristol. Yep, no, it was uh, uh, Saracens marching on, um, I guess. Um, <laughs> they can't was... see the fact that you've got a blackened ear underneath the headphones. Uh, yeah. You've got a little cut under the eyes, is it, or just a shiner? Yeah, I, I'd like to say that's from the rugby. I think it's from my son. Um, <laughs> I don't get involved in too much contact, so uh, I don't think that's from the game. But no, it was, uh, it was a great weekend for us. Um, great turnout from the Bristol fans and to get a win away from home uh, in the international period is is great so boys dug in a very wet day not one for the um the fans really it was uh, for purists only uh, very wet and soggy and not much rugby but a win's a win and we're very happy 20 point personal haul you're just too modest as i'm sure you will be each and every week um a bit of news when no, it comes we can, we can talk about me all every week if oh you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay that's what this podcast becomes <laughs> i'll be very happy as my mum's a listener uh, anyway let's talk about the fact there is a bit of news at saracens or maybe a bit of non-news at saracens with your boy jamie george what's going on is he going to claremont give us the scoop Honestly, this is the first I've heard of it right here, and I would be extremely shocked if he if he was going anywhere. I'm pretty certain uh, he'll be staying at Saracens. He's been there his whole life, and he's a key part of the team. So, I yeah, I mean, this is not something I've ever, ever heard of, so uh, I think it's no news. When you said he's a key part of the team, I thought you just said he's a keeper. I was like, yeah. are you loving that much, do you? Yeah, no, he is a keeper. <laughs> no, he is a keeper as well. Um, but... You know, in the football games, he likes to put himself a centre forward, so not in that sense, but we would like to keep him around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we know he loves himself on the football pitch as well. Uh, listen, guys, if you want to get in touch with us, you want to share your reactions to any of the news, any of the stories that we talk about uh, on House of Rugby, you can get in touch with the house via our new WhatsApp, OK? So drop us a message. You can drop us a voice note as well. Uh, you'll find the house number in the description for this podcast episode, OK? So check it out wherever you're listening. Um, but listen, there's loads for us to discuss today. Uh, we're going to be talking about, of course we are, the big Autumn Nation Series Internationals. We'll also look ahead to the Women's Rugby World Cup final. Come on, Red Roses. Uh, Alex will be playing Agony Aunt as well. And we'll also talk Tashes for the Movember Challenge as well facial hair i like it i like it yeah. okay it's a bit ginger <laughs> <laughs> now listen alex before we get going um maybe we're taking our inspiration from i'm a celeb i, I don't know i don't know right but we're gonna have a game of touch rugby and we're not gonna get our kits on and, and get a ball and throw it about it's not like that um what we're gonna do instead of our serious feature to start each and every week our guest is going to be challenged um to blindly touch a rugby related item to physically touch rugby and why wouldn't you want to okay it's an ethereal you know it's a tangential uh, podcast that we're doing it's a classic game but there is no guest this week alex so guess who's up first um uh, i'm assuming it's me it is you no. yes great guess uh. so I've got something that I know you'll like. You're going to have to take those headphones off, pop these blindfolds on for me, okay. because you are going to be touching great. rugby this week. Stay with us, guys. Yeah, great, that. Yeah. Flamingos. Get it covered. Uh, is that right? I How many fingers I am I holding up? I'm assuming you're not swearing at me. Or maybe you are. Go on, guess. I just want to see if you're psychic. Three? Oh, so close, too. I suppose you couldn't be that wrong. I've only got five fingers on one hand, but there you go. Uh, listen, they're going to bring in our item now to touch rugby, wow. so you just bear with me for a moment. Is it like the removal men in... Um, they, uh, they think it's all over back in the day. <laughs> Old school 90s reference. Ta-da! As if by magic. Hopefully they played a bit of magician's music there. Um, you guys, with me, can see... Let me show you this. This item on the table, just so you can read it. Beautiful isn't it? 
Yes. Now, all the only clue I can give you, Alex, yeah. is that this is fragile. Okay. Fragile. Okay. That means be very gentle. Okay. I can see you trying to look. Uh, what? Right. I'm getting. I'm getting it close as I possibly can. Right, right, close as I possibly can. Okay. It's in a box, so a box am is I, not am the I answer. Close? Am I close? You are. You're getting closer. Gentle. Gentle, Mr. Good. You're close. You're close. Oh, you're close. Oh, God. Go for it. Guess. <laughs> what? Is it a cake? <laughs> I can reveal. You go and take them off. <laughs> Congratulations, oh. Alex! <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, that you is... must know. Um, oh, here that... you go, mate. Here you go. Yeah, Let, me just... Let me just help you out. Let me just help you out with that. If only it had been a, like a, a touch, <laughs> with, you know, uh, to get a face in there, it would have been much better Well, TV, the thing surely. is, um, it oh, is wow. such a lovely cake, we all wanted to eat it. So the uh, instructions beforehand was basically, don't let Alex ruin it, and that's why I told you it was fragile. We, okay. of course, wanted to congratulate you uh, as a podcast, as a team, everyone that's around us, for your fantastic achievement. You've extended uh, that record since you, you made it as well. It's now 340 is it appearances for Saracens? Uh, yes. yes, it is, yeah. Get back oh, in yeah, that sorry. front of that yeah, microphone. Yeah, it is, it is. Sorry, get, yeah, get I'm, those headphones I'm, I'm, I'm blown on. away by the, the cake, how, how good it is. Um, it's lovely. It's a very nice gift, and uh, I could have really put my hand right in that. So, Well, listen, we're going to gonna try a slice of it at the end of the podcast. In the meantime, um, I know you've spoken about this a lot recently. It had to be incredibly emotional, so I'm not going to talk to you about the achievement on the day. I want to talk to you, Alex Good, about your younger years as a player coming through and whether you thought back then that you would make it to this level, this number of games for your club. I'll tell you why. I'll be honest. I'll hold my hands up. You, unbelievably, had doubters in the early years. <laughs> Probably. Is it, is it good to now rub this cake in their faces? Uh, no, I never dreamed I'd play this many games for, for Saracens. Uh, and certainly at the start... Um, it, it took a while for me to even get one game. So um, I guess very grateful that I've had this career that's still going and been lucky with injuries. But um, I just feel uh, really, really lucky and, and very blessed to be at a great club uh, and to have played as much as I have. It is a dream, really, for me. Saracens was a club I supported and went to see in Enfield, my first ever live match. And... Um, to play for them all these years has been amazing. It's given me and my family so many incredible memories on and off the field. And, uh, you know, it's, if you went back in time, I wouldn't have thought it, it would pan out like it has and, and very, very lucky. So, yeah, it's been a, a special um, couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, as, as it is in rugby, it's a bit of a cliche, just on to the next week now. And we got a little message for you as well from the other side of the world. Have a listen. Yeah, just echo what Hugh said about Alex. I mean, it's such a remarkable achievement, but I think what's even more remarkable is the amount of times that you've played, but how you've played well every single time. Every time you take the field, you're such an incredible player for that side. Um, and I think that, you know, there's still plenty more to come because you are you don't seem to be declining in your old age. Well, there you have it. Rachel, thank you very much for that message. I, I echo everything she had to say. Uh, incredible knock. Incredible uh, not yeah. long may it continue. Yeah, she was uh, very kind and then uh, obviously the bit at the end where she just had to little, little dig in about my age. But as I said, um, it doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. No, it's not going to get any easier for you on this podcast either. I think that's the sort of gentlest dig that you're going to get. When Rachel's back, it'll be firm and in your face, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, let's get to uh, what was in your face at the weekend at Twickenham. The Ruggers, that's what we want, those big hits. Big result. Big, big result for Eddie Jones. Um, so many doubts coming into this okay England had a successful summer down under against Australia yes question marks over various parts of the field uh, in particular uh, the midfield combinations there were some new faces in the squad never really plumped for big changes in terms of this lineup but certainly England over this autumn series building up to the World Cup was searching for a bit of identity and everyone wanted it to start well we knew Argentina no mugs but you expect England to win at Twickenham and it's not that it could have gone worse, but the worst thing that really could have happened in terms of the back pages and those headlines was a defeat. What did you make of it? Yeah, look, I, I think any time England play at Twickenham, they expect to win. Um, and, 
you know, it's disappointing. Argentina, a very good side. They've beaten the All Blacks um, recently, but you expect England to win that and they'll be disappointed ultimately. Uh, and, it, and it just felt like uh, it, it didn't have any cohesion. Now, is that pretty difficult? First week up in the autumn, a lot of changes since the summer tour, but I think you expect England to win. I didn't think they would be win you know, convincingly, I thought it would be a bit clunky, but uh, I felt like this game uh, probably asked more questions, um, and there's more questions now that need to be answered than before, which is a shame. Um, you you want England to just be building in this autumn, not perfect, but getting better and better. Six Nations again, getting stronger and stronger, leading up to the World Cup, because we're a year out now from the World Cup, under a year, and England need momentum, they need to start... Um, feeling confident they want to start playing well. Argentina deserve great credit, though, for their performance to show up at Twickenham. Second win there, a first one back in 2006. There's now wins over Australia and New Zealand for them this year. What did they do so well that maybe England didn't? Well, they did deserve it. They, they played very well. Um, I thought they were they were very smart in terms of they didn't give any, uh, England anything to hit. So they know England are very good defensively. They're very physical. And I think it was some of the lowest amount of tackles England have ever had to make at home, which means they were kicking in behind a lot. They didn't allow England to get off the line and whack their, their players. But when they did get into the English 22 or English half, they were clinical. And that, that was the difference, really, because England had long passages of play but or got to the 22... But they weren't clinical. Like Argentina, they had their chances and they took them. And they kicked well, but they also scored. So, look, I, I think uh, credit to Argentina. They had a good game plan going into it, but yeah, everyone had a plan. They executed it really well. And that first phase move they scored in the corner it was brilliant. And you could see there was a sense of a team that knew exactly what they wanted to do, and they went out there and did it. Yeah, Buffelli, absolutely brilliant with the boot. Fantastic at try that he finished off in the corner as well. And Michael Checker gets that win over his old foe, Eddie Jones, as well. So a great afternoon for him. I, I went to the game at Twickenham and I felt going into it that, firstly, we weren't reading the emotion of the occasion. You know, it was all for England. It was like, well, it's our first game of the autumn. Let's settle in. Let's do some things well, put in a solid performance. And I actually thought Argentina were going to get something because, by the way, it's Argentina who, of course, want to beat England each and every time. They had something to prove as well after three straight defeats at the end of the rugby championship. And I just felt that maybe England, with those new combinations who hadn't settled in together might might just be a little bit off it. So I wasn't surprised that Argentina ran out winners in the end, I've got to say. But um, one of the things that I think everyone was excited to see um, were the midfield three, if you like. Uh, the control of, of Marcus Smith, Owen Farrell at number 12, Manu Tuolangi back and fit and happy now at Sell Sharks. Um, he Finally, Eddie Jones got that midfield that he wanted why didn't it fire? Why didn't it fire? Well, let's go to the house landline number and have a listen to what uh, what questions we've been asked on this topic. Hi, my name's Connor from Bath. Um, and after I'm quite disappointed after seeing the first outing of Smith, Farrell and Tuolagi. Um, they show no impetus and no real go forward. Do you think any of that will change? Uh, Tuolagi maybe has a bit of an excuse not having played much, but Smith and Farrell have played a few games together now and don't really seem to be combining or offering much in attack. And I'm concerned with only a few games going before the World Cup and not, seemingly not a plan B, what might happen to England? What do you think? I think it's what everyone has been talking about. Everyone wants to talk about the Marcus Smith and Farrell combination, and then they thought, well, Manu's there now, everything will work. But it takes time. Cohesion is everything in team sport, and you could see it the weekend with Argentina as a team. Like They've come off the back of playing lots of games. They know, know exactly what they want to do. England haven't, and they're going to have to try and speed that process up as much as possible. Now, we've seen Owen and Marcus play, and there's been good moments and not so good moments um, in the in the summer series. Ultimately, I think it's a partnership that can work and work well. I just think it will take time. Um, and you could see glimpses at the weekend of um, getting Joe Cochran Singer into the game more and Jack Knoll coming off his wing. And they've got ball, uh, ball runners outside those two ball players. Um, but it will take time. And that's not what England fans want. They want an answer now. But it, it's going to take time to develop for them to understand each other. And... Um, Look, it's it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, Marcus Smith and Eddie Jones, it's a weird one. 
I don't really see him as the coach to necessarily play an X Factor style of rugby. And you've got Marcus Smith, who has an X Factor. Does he get the best out of him? Can he get the best out of him? Oh, I, don't, you know, I think it's international rugby. It is different to club rugby. What Marcus does for Harlequins week in, week out, it is impossible to replicate at international rugby. There isn't as much space. The, 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 the players against you defend at another level up. Everyone's so organised. It, it's different. Like, I think the, the progression for, the, for him and Owen together is like Owen and George Ford played together so much and we were a dominant team and they both played brilliantly together and I think you can still do the same with Marcus and him um, but they just need to understand how they best use people outside them as well so Marcus getting the best out of Tulangi is, is so important you know because Ford did do, did do that and Marcus has got the same role to do and he's also got to play his own game. He can't be thinking, oh, you know, I've got to fit in with Owen or that. He's got to play his game the best way he can play. And, you know, he won't be thinking once he's out there, oh, Eddie wants me to do this or that. He'll be going, what's the best for the team? There's space, I'm going to kick into it. There's space to run there, I'm going to run into it. So uh, he, he's mature beyond his years. He'll know how to play. He knows how to play rugby. He knows how to unlock defences. I just think at the moment the opportunities aren't there but they will come and he'll get more and more comfortable in that position and he's got a year before the World Cup with him and Owen playing perhaps, you know, 10 to 12 games maybe together, which will help their relationship massively. Are you team Eddie? You believe he's the man to take us through to the World Cup? I, I certainly think that it would be wrong to get rid of someone now uh, within a year before the World Cup. Um, I, I don't necessarily know if he his big plan as he talks about or, or, or people talk about that he's got this plan I don't know I, I, I think he's a very astute clever coach so I think he does have a good idea uh, of what he wants to do but I think it's the group probably want to have that momentum as I talk about and belief so that they get start to winning win games now and go to the Six Nations feeling confident in a perfect world try and win the Six Nations because then they're building up to the World Cup in a great place but um I certainly think that right now he is the, the the coach to take us to the World Cup. We see a lot of teams, though, in the Premiership play a quicker style uh, of rugby, um, and Eddie Jones doesn't necessarily think that's conducive at the uh, international level to success. Um, a lot of your teammates involved in England... In fact, Saracens back in the day were called boring Saracens because you played a slower style, and then you managed to quicken that tempo. You managed to quicken that tempo. It led to so much success... Um, do you think that's something that England just need to do now because what they're doing is not working? Look, I think the attack's probably the the big worry. Um, I think I saw some stats that uh, over the years it, it's they've scored less and less tries now, uh, particularly last year uh, or this year. Sorry, um, I look, it, it's something to to look at. They're going to have to. I I guess we know the fundamentals of set piece, kick chase, defence are in a good place for England. Um, or pretty good place. They'll be disappointed about leaking 30 points to, to Argentina. That said, it was silly penalties consistently that kept allowing them back in the game, allowing them to get a foothold. And that was, and that's what cost England, really. Yes, they, they did score and they leaked a try, but if you're constantly letting three points, six points, nine points, 12 points going on and on, it, 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 it can be an energy sapper, but also just crucifies the team in terms of not getting ahead and forcing them to chase the game. So, look, I think that that was the big problem. Uh, but really, the attack is what people want to see and they want to think with Marcus and Owen there, why is it not working? Again, cohesion is key here. It's going to take time. Um, but England only have, uh, what, 11 months. The reaction to it was, was massive. Uh, comments from at Rugby Joe, by the way, on Instagram and Twitter. So if you aren't following already, make sure you do. Uh, Russ Dunn says completely deserved. Mr Sweetman says England will lose all four autumn tests. Ominous. Uh, Brian O'Dwyer, well done, Argentina. England think they're better than they actually are. Very average from England all around the park. So there you have it. Well, I think... It's, it's classic English mentality to say, oh, we're the worst in the world now, oh, we're terrible, and, you know, like, it's a good team. They played against a good team, we played well, had a good plan. As I said, I don't, don't, it's not that England have to win all the games, but you just want to see them building throughout this autumn, and they'll probably learn a lot from that loss, and they'll definitely come out next week and, and be a better side for it. Um, sometimes taking a few losses like this 
uh, can only help you and improve you. And they'll have some pretty honest conversations this week, no doubt. And they'll talk about what went wrong, why they're making those mistakes, and they'll come back out. And I think you'll see a, a very improved England side next week. Maybe the most significant win of the weekend. Let's touch on it very quickly. Ireland at the world number one side, beating South Africa, the world champions. You can get more um, reaction to that on House of Rugby URC with Greg Lindsay and Jason. Um, a few people saying, well, can Ireland do this when it matters next year at the World Cup? Interesting to hear Andy Farrell, Johnny Sexton as well, not getting ahead of themselves despite the victory, just saying, look, it's a good start to the autumn, nothing more. You know, it's all about peaking at the right time. Yeah, I mean, they know they know too well that 2018, they, they beat everyone and won everything, and then 2019, they weren't at their best at the World Cup. So they're very experienced people, you know, two of the most experienced, well, experienced player and a very experienced coach. They know about winning, and they won't get ahead of themselves. They'll just be going, we've got to improve on that for next week. Got to improve. But big statement, beating South Africa in tough conditions is is impressive at any stage i know they're at home um but i think both teams will take a lot from that they're in the same group i believe um or early stages of the world cup and they'll have to play each other again and they all south africa will go well there were glimpses we've got a chance if we make our kicks then mm. you know we're winning that game and ireland will go okay well we, we could attack a bit better here and open up a bit more to give us better opportunities so a really a great game of rugby. Um, Ireland, fair play, coming through and winning that. There were some massive moments in that second half that they hung on to and uh, came through with the result. And thrilling game of rugby in Paris as well. A one-point win for France. Uh, Australia will be, you know, in a really bittersweet mood because they didn't get the result. They played so well. They elevated their level. Not many go coast to coast against France these days as well. But France showed they got they got match winners in the side as well to, to get over the line. Yeah, I think what impressed me, I thought Australia were very good. And physically, I was very impressed with them. They were going after France in the carries. They were going after them defensively, which against a massive French side is, is very hard to do. And really impressed with how Australia went about it. Um, but at the same time, very impressed with the French. You know, they, they made a few errors towards the end. You thought, has their chance gone? But they kept attacking. They were brave enough to keep going, keep going. And um, I certainly thought um, uh, Jalabé coming on was was brilliant and really did change the tempo a bit. He, his speed onto it, his pass to Pinot, which was you know a great pass, but a great finish as well. So fair play to France. I worry that you know have they peaked too early, or and the pressure for them being in a home uh, World Cup will, will be too much. But a brilliant side and at their best, um, phenomenal to watch. Yeah, a record 11 f uh, wins in a row for France. Uh, fantastic for them. Great first main weekend, if you like, for the Autumn Nation series. Had just about everything, all the drama. That's a fire alarm. That sounds like a fire alarm. There are no birthday candles on your cake, I can confirm. So maybe we're going to get out the building. That was a real life fire alarm. And we had to go outside to a square. We had to go over. And in fact, we were the only people in the building that did. Everyone else stayed just outside. But we wanted to carry the fire drill out to the max. And we are safe and sound back in the studio now. Well, uh, we, we listened to the fire marshal. We, we, we did. Good, good humans. Exactly. Exactly. And we were on fire before that happened. But um, shh. And we're back in the room, like I say. Um, and we're talking about uh, the Women's World Cup final this weekend. The Red Roses have been absolutely superb so far. Amazing semi-finals as well. England beating Canada. And New Zealand coming past France uh, just in the end. Let's cross back to New Zealand, in fact, and speak to Rachel Burford. Are you loving life out there right now? Oh, yeah, you can definitely feel that things are getting heated up for this weekend. Um, just last night, they announced Eden Park final tickets are sold out and gone. So we could be looking at another record-breaking attendance this weekend. But I think overall, the tournament has been excellent from all the teams participating to all the fan engagement, the broadcast. Um, you know, it's definitely been one of the best World Cups that I've ever 
been around to, um, you know, played in some, but this is on a different scale. I've been really impressed with most of the teams. And this weekend, looking ahead for England versus New Zealand, it's going to be so intense. The semi finals were ridiculous. I mean, we were sitting there in the stands watching, saying, You're meant to enjoy watching rugby. It was that tense that you were on the edge of your seat for England, Canada, and also for um, England, France, New Zealand. So everything's teed up for an epic weekend ahead and you know both teams England and New Zealand have shown vulnerabilities there's ways that you can beat either team so it's all going to be about how those teams can manage all of that pressure come Saturday but it's been such a great trip and and yeah it's it's definitely put women's rugby on I mean women's rugby was already on the map but this has done it to a new scale which just makes 2025 what when we're hosting in England the prospect of that is literally mouth-watering so England in the final against New Zealand um Eden Park Auckland the home advantage maybe will tell in the end but they've been fantastic so far no reason why they can't beat New Zealand as well Look, uh, it's it's great for the women's game. Hopefully, fifty thousand people watching the final. Um, two of the the standout teams, obviously, and uh, it's a final everyone wanted. A home nation versus the number one team in the world. So, look, it's uh, it'd be a great, great um, event. A huge, huge day, and and hopefully, uh, England can come through. They, they've looked like they've built throughout the tournament. They've got better and better. Um, and they're showing real ambition, as you can see in that semi-final with that try from under their own sticks against Canada, um, which is which is brave in in knockout rugby to play like that. It takes a lot of bravery and, and fair play, yeah, seeing the opportunities and taking them. And uh, it's going to be a great final. But wishing the Red Roses all the best from everyone over here. Of course, we wish them all the best. Um, going to take something special to get past New Zealand on their own turf. That mentality is going to be so important. Rachel, of course, played in several World Cup finals and was a winner in one of them as well. How difficult will it be? Yeah, I think naturally any kind of final, especially World Cup finals, are different to other games. You know, it's it's the final opportunity, the final chance. And But the only thing for me is that I think too many people get lost in it. and that, And that's the biggest thing. Like, if you... If you get lost in the moment, then A, you don't appreciate the moment that you're in and the opportunity that you have and how exciting and how incredible playing in a stadium, knowing what's on the line, like enjoying that, like that you've got to remember to enjoy that. And I remember my first ever World Cup final, um, I was actually an NPR for that in 2006 and I was so, so nervous. And one of the girls just said, look, we've worked so hard to get here let's just enjoy the moment and be present and I remember taking that through to the next World Cup finals I had like understanding that the, it's a big game however you've worked so hard for it you're prepared for it and it's it's just another game of rugby with a bit of something shiny at the end of it that you really really want but at the end it is just another game so it thinks about preparing how you kind of stay in those moments and don't allow that kind of pressure to ruin it because if you allow all that pressure to come in, then that's where mistakes will happen. Your your charts start forcing things, and you know I've been in games where we've done that, where we're in, for instance, like Premiership finals, where we're trying too hard, and and that's not helping us because you're just so desperate. So it's about how you can stay calm and remote and you know relaxed in that environment, but being able to put everything that you've worked on into that game as you would of the week before. Because if you don't do what you did the week before, where you did win, you don't bring that into this game, then it's going to be a hard battle. So I think, yes, they do have a different mental challenge. However, it's one of the most incredible things to be part of finals and to have all of that on the line. It's, you know, nobody at elite sport trains just to participate week in, week out. They train to win every week and they train to get into finals. So you have to love and enjoy being in that environment and under that amount of pressure. And how much of an advantage will it be playing in Eden Park in front of their home fans in Auckland for the Black Ferns? Uh, it's going to be a massive advantage because let me give you a little um, taste of England versus Fiji in the opening game. Um incredible sold out again and the the fans there was three games on so they were kind of dripping in throughout the day but there was at least i think about twenty thousand watching 
England play Fiji and the pitch side guys were like, give us a cheer if you're supporting England. And there was like about four people, it felt like, and I was one of those four. And then the rest, it just erupted with everybody supporting Fiji. And, you know, you reflect on England's first half, they were shaken by that. They don't often experience where teams, especially in England where they've got such an incredible fan base, they don't often have the team the audience against them and at the weekend France versus um, New Zealand so France scored and I was I was talking to I was like uh, watching the game France scored but I didn't even notice that they had scored because it was dead silent I like looked up and I saw that she was lining up for a conversion I was like oh my god that just shows how many black fan supporters they're going to have and how much that will lift them um, as a like, I think England can handle that. They've played in France in front of big audiences, but for New Zealand, what it can do to lift them because they're all about their family, their friends, and their fans. So it's whether it gives them the edge as opposed to puts England off the game. It's going to be an amazing, an amazing final. Uh, first thing Saturday morning, six thirty start. Make sure you set your alarm clocks for that one. We'll react to everything that happens uh, down in Auckland uh, with Rachel, who hopefully will be stepping off a plane and straight into the studio with us uh, next week for all the reaction. Again, we wish the Red Roses all of the best in that final. Uh, now, Alex Good, for this new season of House of Rugby, you have admirably, bravely agreed to answer any questions that you the listeners have ask alex we're calling it anything from rugby to relationships this man has the answers not fingers crossed no not relationships <laughs> please don't <laughs> diy don't. maybe gardening yes <laughs> you know not relationship advice don't sue us either for his answers but yeah. you can get involved next week Leave a voice message on the house landline. Um, and you can find the number, by the way, in the podcast description. This week, the question comes from Benji in Earlsfield. Chris Tarrant. Hi, Alex. I'm a disillusioned Wasps fan. And my question is, with the future of my club up in the air and Premiership Rugby in dire straits, can you recommend any other hobbies or armchair sports that could fill the gap in my life? Appreciate your thoughts. Thanks, and welcome back to the Airwaves, guys. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, the, the 90s sort of ringtone <laughs> into the handset there. Have Loved it. Home phone. Um, what's next? The uh, dial-up internet <laughs> noise. Um, <laughs> find a sports centre where you can go and play kabaddi. I remember seeing that on Trans World Sport when I was younger, and it just looks mental, but, like, good mental. Uh, crazy <laughs> sport. That would be a good crack. Get into that or watching that. Um, they get some big crowds, I think. Um, or fail safe. Um, drink, drink wine. Become good at <laughs> good at wine. You know, understanding of your your wines and what you like and cooking. That's a uh, professional athlete's um, uh, help there, isn't it? Put loads of butter in your cooking and get good at cooking and drink wine. There, there you have it. Well, another new feature uh, this season on House of Rugby is called Pass It On. I'm going to pass it over to Rachel to explain this one. So every week on House of Rugby podcast, we want you to pass it on. This feature is going to be about shouting out the amazing people in our game at the grassroots, at the heart of our community. So I'm going to start out with Tony Krage, and I want to shout you out because you did so much for me in the under nines at Medway Rugby Club when we were just about to start doing contact, and I was the only girl, and you used to actually shout me out and say, we need to all tackle like Rachel, and it gave me so much confidence and um, so the first ever Rug house of rugby podcast pass it on goes to you tony so if there's somebody at your club as an unsung hero or a local legend and you want to shout them out then drop us a message or even better voice note us we've got a house landline number and you can drop us a whatsapp the number you'll be able to find in the episode description I love this one. I love Pass It On. This is going to be the best of community rugby throughout the season. I'm sure it will. I'm not surprised uh, to hear that Rachel was a terrier with her tackling in the under nines as she has been uh, as a great professional as well. Have you got one? What, a shout out? A or? shout out, yeah. Uh, I always think um, our kit man. It's just yeah. a, t it's a tough job being a kit man at the club. Um, there's also, I, I think actually at Saracens, you've got the pioneers who just volunteers on match day. You help people out and make the match day experience much better. I think they're 
pretty uh, pretty amazing and they do it for the love and um, you know they're, they're, they're great at the club so they, they get a shout out for me the Saracens Pioneers that's what we're talking about so you get the idea guys make sure you get involved uh, check out our house landline whatsapp already if you haven't make sure you got that number in your phone because you're going to need it throughout the season uh, now on the House of Rugby podcast, we like to keep on top of trending topics as well across our socials. So a warm welcome to the Rugby Joe admin. Greetings, listeners. Hello, Hugh, Rachel and Alex. This is Rugby Joe admin here for all your social feed needs. Alex, you look totally jacked. Have you been working out? Trending this week are mustaches. Rugby players have been posting their lip foliage all over the gram with some brave and unusual choices. This is all for a good cause, so good luck to everyone involved. So that's taken a turn there. Um, <laughs> be careful with my words now. <laughs> it's a sultry voice for the rugby admin throughout the season. We're going to be going to have to be careful what we ask her to say, to be perfectly honest. But yes, that is our rugby Joe admin who will be with us throughout the season. And what she's referring to, of course, is Movember. Uh, we know what it means. Growing your tash is one way to get involved and make a difference when it comes to mental health and suicide prevention, prostate cancer and testicular cancer as well. In this spirit, then, we wanted to ask who's got the best tash in rugby. Alex? Um, well, it's a great cause, uh, first and foremost. The best ones I, I can think of off the top of my head, uh, I used to love Maxime Madar uh, from Toulouse in France, but more for the lamb chops he had. They were yeah. just incredible. Um, Strictly, moustache, uh, Jason Eaton, the old Kiwi lock, played in France. He had a great moustache. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're two two great ones there's, there's some terrible ones out there at the moment Nick White usually does a terrible one in Australia he's Australian nine. it's beginning to suit him I've got to say and do you know what it's just coming round I mean the, 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 the moustache generally speaking you guys can let us know what you think about this I think it's in fashion I don't know if it's in fashion. Oh, I can't. I, I can't. I can't me. back you up on that. Um, <laughs> I think facial hair is, but the, just the pu- the purity of uh, of a moustache still doesn't look quite right. There's Listen, been too many villains and horrific humans with a moustache for it to be all right. I think. Guys, send us the selfies of your Movember tashes, and we will rate them on next week's House of Rugby. Uh, Rachel, what's your view? Well, I'm going to take us to Hong Kong Sevens and Henry Patterson from the Australian Seven has an extremely thick black tash. So I'm going to say Henry. Okay, like I say, we want to see your Movember attempts. Uh, You can tag Rugby Joe on socials. We'll share some of the best and the worst on our story. So be aware of that. We'll even rate them, as I mentioned on next week's podcast. More information, how you can get involved, is on the Movember website. Now, before you go, we're going to throw caution to the wind here, OK? Uh, we're going to have some hot takes and wild predictions over what's going to happen across these autumn internationals. Let's start with what Rachel thinks. Well, I think that England are going to do OK, but for me... And this is not great coming from an English woman, but I think France and Ireland are going to be the ones up there to beat. She stuck her neck out on the opening one by saying France and Ireland are the, the yeah, teams to beat. England are going to be OK. I was about to say, you, you, you <laughs> hammed it up with this wild prediction. So I was like, I won't be that wild because I don't like being wrong. I'm competitive, so I want to make sure my predictions are right. You know, So I won't be that wild. But... Safe from Rachel. It's going to be safe from you as well. Yeah, I mean, Rachel has not gone mad there. She said, OK, England, and then said France and Ireland do well, who historically have. <laughs> You're not going to get any wild predictions from me because I don't like being wrong and I want to make sure my predictions are on the money. I guess, though, um, I-, I thought it would be an interesting uh, autumn for England, and mm. it, having started as it is, I, I think they will bounce back and, and it will finish well for them. Um, I certainly think that England will finish at the end of the autumn doing well, but it will be up and down throughout, so a mixed bag. Um, I can't see Ireland losing. I think France uh, are fallible. I think um, they they could lose a game. I think their record of 11 games uh, or unbeaten will will turn now. Big one against South Africa. I I could see them losing um, to South Africa, yes. I okay. think that this African physicality will will match what they have and take it to another level. 
Okay, all right. I'm happy to give a hot take on this one. It's a long-term hot take, but it's due to the results that England have during this period that will mean Eddie Jones will not make it to the Six Nations as England's head coach. Wow, I, I don't see that happening. I but know you do. I li- I that's, like, why, that's why it's a hot take. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I, one, well, I've just thought of um, coming in. Luckily, my, uh, my friend... Uh, Francis from the the Flavin clan in Scotland <laughs> told me beforehand that um, that Finn Russell's back this week in camp with wow. um, with Scotland. Um, it's in the news now, but he was the one to allude it to me. He wants a shout out. <laughs> um, he and I think Scotland going to push New Zealand close with some Finn magic. That's oh. what I'm going to say. I don't think they're going to win, but I think it's going to be neck and neck, and they New Zealand will just come through at the end. Scotland will play New Zealand and Argentina, and you've got to say, for those two matches, you want to see Finn Russell out there conducting the orchestra in his unique way. Um, Listen, that's all we've got time for, pretty much. I just want to thank Alex and Rachel. Thank you for joining us as well. First episode of the brand-new look... House of Rugby, okay? So make sure you come back, hit that notification button as well. Uh, We'll be back next week on House of Rugby. And in the meantime, remember, if you want to get in touch, don't forget the House Landline number. It's open all hours for your WhatsApp voice notes, Movember tashes, anything you want to get in touch with us with, particularly Ask Alex, okay? You've got an issue going on. This man can solve it for you. The number is down there in the description, so make sure you check it out. And we'll see you next week. Been a pleasure. Cheers, mate. I've loved it. Great to be back on. We're going to try some of this cake now. Yes, we are.